So the next question is, if I could visit any star in the sky, which one would I visit? Um, well, it would be uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Oh, oh, on the sky. <laughs> I'm so funny. Um, most stars aren't that interesting. They're just stars. Um, it would be kind of cool to see a brown dwarf up close. These are these sort of midway between planets and stars. They're more massive than planets, but they're not really stars. And they would be about the same size as Jupiter, but they're hot. They're, and and they, they glow very gently in, in infrared. And they have very peculiar weather patterns on them. So that would be kind of neat to see one of those. But, you know, you, you, you'd want to see something like a nebula up close, these big gorgeous gas clouds. And the problem is that the, the coolest ones, like, like this one, the ring nebula, you can see this, this, this ring with this little star in the center. The problem is these things look beautiful through the telescope, but if you got up close to them, their light gets so spread out that if you were inside of it and you looked out, you wouldn't see them. It's actually pretty amazing. I did the math on this a long time ago. And you spread the light out so much that you're, you're basically you're thinning out the, the, the light. And you could be right in the middle of one and never even know it. And so there are these famous ones like... Um, like the cat eye, the cat eye nebula right here, or this one's called Myel Canon 18. It's also called, I think, um, the Eye of God, uh, and it was on the uh, Pearl Jam cover. I think it's actually a relatively famous planetary nebula because it was it, it it made Pearl Jam. So there you go. But you can actually, you know, fly your starship, fly the Enterprise right into one of these things, and and never even know you're in it. It's it's really depressing. Um, the reason you can see them in pictures is because the telescope is gathering a lot of light and focusing it into a small area, so that makes it brighter. And the telescope is actually, and, and the detectors that we use are more sensitive to the type of light planetary nebulae put out. A star puts out a continuous spectrum in, in all different colors. There's, you know, a million shades of red, a million shades of yellow and orange, and you put them all together and you get, you get starlight. These, these planetary nebulae are, are made of gas, a very thin gas. So the physics of the situation makes it so that they put out light at a very specific wavelength. It is, it is red at this precise wavelength and orange at this precise wavelength. And our eyes aren't as sensitive to that kind of light as they are the continuous spectrum. And that's why fluorescent lights seem harsher than incandescent lights because fluorescent lights put out individual wavelengths that, 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 that mimic white light, like the light I'm using here, actually. These are these compact fluorescents. But they, they don't they don't look like natural light because they're not. It's a totally different uh, physical situation. They're putting out a different type of light from the sun altogether. And so uh, that's why it's hard to make natural light fluorescent lights. And that's the same reason that if you were to fly to a planetary nebula, it really wouldn't look like much. So a little depressing, but, you know, the universe isn't, isn't built to, to make us happy. Uh, sometimes you just have to be satisfied with setting up your telescope and looking at it that way because sometimes things are prettier from far away than they are up close. A lesson that, that we could probably all stand to learn, right?